Welcome along to a, another Pixie Cast number 47 in this series. And I am back in Cheshire, back in Sandbatch, and back in the family home of the Farrows. And this time I'm talking to the husband of Jen. It's James. Hi, James. How are you? Hi, Andrew. Fine, thanks. You doing well? What's, it, what's, what's a Sunday like for you normally in, in your part of the world? Relaxing. Jenny's at work. She's been at work overnight, so... Um, yeah, stress-free environment. <laughs> uh <-huh. coughs> no, you got so, you got some children to attend to, but I guess yeah, they're no, still they're, 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 they're still in bed. They're teenagers, yeah. so uh -huh. um, uh, no, the kids were playing hockey yesterday, so they're a bit tired. Today, so. Right. Okay. No in no injuries to report from yesterday. <clears throat> no, no, all fine. Daniel won, so his balls match was cancelled. To be fair, but uh -huh. yeah, no, right, okay. been, so it's it's a Sunday. So sure. Well, with teenagers, I think you have to do that, don't you? So. Absolutely. They set their own agenda most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, my son's like a machine during the week, so he's, you know, yeah. he gets up the minute his alarm clock goes off and hits the shower, so he's like a robot. So uh -huh. Okay. You've got to give him some lee leeway. So Sandbatch then, tell us a little, little bit about Sandbatch, apart from the terrible service station on the, uh, on the M6. <clears throat> Sandbatch, small town, Cheshire. It's, um, don't know how many people there are. It's not a very big town. Um, I've uh, been here about 16 years, I think, living here, 16 years. Uh -huh. So um, I've worked most of my career sort of in the, around the Cheshire area. So I started off in the nuclear industry okay. in uh, Warrington. So uh -huh. I worked in Warrington for a while yeah. and then uh, went over to Chester. And now my job is in Stockport. So, uh, okay. so kind of central to all of those areas, really. So. Yeah. So you know, the, you know the Northwest pretty well then. So Yeah, well, I, grew up, I grew up here from the age of about... I guess uh, from high school age, I was mm -hmm. uh, in Congleton, which is across the other side of the motorway, really. Um, yeah. So it's all very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. So close to Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. And close so, to Liverpool and Stoke and mm -hmm. places like that. So. Yeah. So we're not far from Crewe. We're about five miles away from Crewe, and that's the main train mm -hmm. line. So you can pretty much get anywhere in the country really easily. Well, really. they say, don't they? All, all trains lead to Crewe, they say. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And also right on the motorway so it's good for going anywhere so. uh -huh. and uh, you just touched a little bit upon your work what is it that you do at the moment well i did a mechanical engineering degree at cranfield uh, sorry nottingham we did a master's at cranfield and um yeah so i work in sort of engineering analysis so we use computer modeling to simulate stuff we started off in seismic analysis so earthquake okay. modeling uh -huh. um, so i did that for six seven years so doing lots of fancy computer models of all sorts of stuff. And, right. and now I do it. Um, I work a lot in, I guess, aerospace industry, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit, you know, taking a bit of a downturn at the moment, seeing there's no sure. planes in the sky. So, uh -huh. um, yeah. but yeah, in general manufacturing. So anything you do with deforming metal, <clears throat> so forging, forming, right. heat, heat treatment, and we use computer modeling to yeah. design the components, help the manufacturing. Wow. Stuff. So we use the software and we sell it and we support it sort of all around the Northern Europe. So uh -huh. I spend a lot of time in Sweden and places like, you know, Scandinavia quite a bit. You haven't met Klaus Leon on your travels, have you? No. Okay. No, the only person I've met on the other group from, the, from just general work travels is Peter. Okay. Uh -huh. So I spend quite a bit of time in Glasgow. Actually. Right. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, come up to that a little bit yeah. uh, in a little while. So, um, so happy, uh, happy with your life and your work balance at the moment with COVID and everything as, as much as yeah. you can be? Yeah, well, you know, I've been quite lucky, you know, so my job's been pretty steady right the way through. So um, I can do my job from home. I already work from home a bit, so it's not mm -hmm. a problem. A lot of people I work with are sort of in the US or in Europe, so it's, yeah. um, you do that remotely anyway. Sure. Um, I don't miss the, the plane flights. I'm not a <laughs> great flyer, so... Uh -huh. Uh, but then, yeah, so I'm pretty much sat where I am all week. So, yeah, yeah. I normally don't like to be here on a Sunday now, so because uh, <laughs> I'm in here in, on this seat all of week. Of course, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so every there's a lot of people in a much uh, more difficult position, so sure. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite lucky. I think, so. And having, having a nice break from Manchester Airport then for the time being, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Cool, okay, so Pixies then. Tell me about yeah. Pixies and uh, how they came into your life and when it was and, and what you first remember about it. 
Well, I guess they came into my life a bit the same time that Jenny did, to be fair. I mean, I'd heard the Pixies before, but I wasn't a massive fan. I, mean, I liked the music, but I, I wasn't, you know, I just scratched the surface and heard some, some songs that were played around. But I was heavily into sort of other types of music at the time, I guess. Um, so when Jenny sort of, I met Jenny when I was at Cranfield doing masters and she was trained to be a pilot. Yeah, and, I remember um, that's telling her telling us that. Yeah. And she was really into the Pixies, so I started listening to that and really enjoyed it and been listened to it ever since. So, um, uh -huh. so then got into the all the Frank Black stuff because that was 95, 94, 95. So that's the guess the time when uh, Frank Black was doing his solo stuff as well. Yeah. So, um, uh -huh. So I think I think actually did Jenny actually claim that she got you into the Pixies? I forget now. Well, yeah, she did absolutely. Okay. Um, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So that's how you you've always got to be open to new music, and um, if you're True. not, then you know it's boring because you might find something that you absolutely love. Yeah. yeah. Jordan's um, still trying to get me into a band called Cold Chisel, who are Australian. So. Never heard them. No, there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to it now. There you go. Because I like to do look, that. Look them up. Cold Cold okay. Chisel. They're yeah. they're a real they're a real sort of um, stalwart, if you like, of the Australian uh, music scene. They've been around for years and years, but um, yeah. They okay. like the that's that's the Australian music scene's doing well at the moment, like with the psychedelic crumpets, porn yeah, crumpets. Yeah. They're great. I love uh -huh. that band. And um, so there's a big sort of scene going on at the moment. It's quite exciting. Something yeah, and there's another stuff. band as well, which um, Hector told me to look up as well, and I've forgotten the name of them. Um, it'll come to me, but they're they're really yeah, good yeah. as well. But um, okay, yeah. So uh, okay, so um, do you remember what the first track was that Jen played to you then? No idea. It no. would have been <laughs> off Surfer Rosa, I think. Okay. So um, probably I think she was listening to that that a lot at the time. So yeah, yeah. my memory's not great for. That's uh, all right. That's okay. No. But was Steve, it a, a, drinking? <laughs> it was an it's instant. A, it was an instant attraction. Then was it? I think so. Jen, I, both I, to Jenny and to the Pixies. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say yes to both. <laughs> Just in case Jenny watches this, um, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, uh -huh. I liked it straight away. Um, so it's kind of you know powerful, sort of visceral music quite aggressive in its way, yeah. you know, um, but melodic in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's got a lot, a lot in there and it's changed over time as well. Yeah. No, especially with, the new, with the new stuff, which I like. Yeah. yeah. And um, you're a musician yourself as well. So at that time, were you playing <laughs> instruments or? Had you no, I didn't, I didn't start playing until about 10 years ago. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. I, yeah. No, I've not been, I wasn't. Uh, yeah. Bathroom singer, like everyone, you know, yeah. uh, but no. Okay. I wasn't back then at all. I had no, I had even no inkling of being a musician. Before. Right. Okay. And I wouldn't call myself a musician. So. <laughs> uh, I've spoken to other people who, who disagree with that opinion about yeah. you, but um, yeah. So, um, so a favourite Pixies track then from their whole catalogue. I know you've been doing uh, your homework. Yeah, I struggle with this because I guess it changes depending on your mood or sure. what time of day it is or. Yeah where you are at your time in the week, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's that old Desert would... Island disc thing though, if you had to save one track. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I don't know. I might say something a bit left field than like, um, Bird Dream or Olympus Mons then or something like that. Okay. Off from the mind. That was, uh, that was one that um, Benedict chose the other day actually yeah, when, okay. I spoke, when I spoke to him who's uh, as you know the uh, the Frank Black of uh, Hey Pixies yeah yeah, yeah and no, um, no. I mean he, he was choosing tracks all over the place he, I couldn't really pin him down but um, Bird Dream of the, it's, it's the same. I made this list last night and went through yeah. stuff and uh, yeah but I like you know the simple stuff as well like you know Cactus and things like that you know uh, yeah there's so much great material uh, Absolutely. I mean, I can't even choose my favourite album, to be honest, let alone my favourite track. Oh, well, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, well, I knew you were going to ask that. So, <clears throat> I don't know. It depends what mood you're in. Uh, sure. You know, if yeah. I'm driving, I like, you know, Surfer Roads is great, you know, because it's, I like that. It's that. The album's short. Yeah. Um, it's really to the point. It's, um, 
it's near perfect in a way. So mm-hmm. we'd probably say that. I mean, yeah. um, but you know, Bossa Nova. I'll go through a phase where you know you just listen to Bossa Nova, and um, yeah. you know that. I get and um, yeah, do little. They're all good. They're all good. So I, I don't know. I can't. I can't answer that question really. Okay. Um, but if you push me and said only one, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably say. Um, I might say Bossa Nova to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, you know. But you'd be happy with any of them. I'm happy with any of them. If you just had to save one one album from the seas, from the waves. Yeah, Bossa Nova. Okay. Because it's got a good variety of sort of stuff on there. Sure. And it's got Valoria on there, but which is Jenny's choice as well. So yeah, it has. That would be that would be good. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. cool. Okay, lovely. So, um, so there you were getting well into Pixies and that, and then they suddenly split up after Trump the Monde. Yeah, when did what year did they split up? Ninety four was it? Yeah, so, yeah, so oh, they they split up when we I started liking them. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm always late to the show. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, yeah. so you had the back catalogue to, to delve into. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Um, were you aware that Frank Black had gone out on his own, that he was doing solo stuff? Yeah, yeah. So we'd, we'd been, we were listening. I know oh, we never saw the tours or anything. You know, when I was, a, I guess, a student um, in the middle of Cranfield, which is like just an airfield and that's it. You just, yeah. you don't go anywhere. You, don't, you know, you don't do anything. So it's like <laughs> study and drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. things have changed now you know you didn't even buy a coffee then you know right. back in those days as a student but now it's a lifestyle and people <laughs> you know okay, yeah. spending yeah. loads of money on coffee and uh-huh. stuff. so yeah. it's it's yeah. a different kind of experience um yeah so we didn't start yeah we never saw any of that stuff i really you know it's a bit of a shame because i i really love the the solo stuff the catholic stuff and the, nearly even more than the pixies to be honest okay it's, yeah Sometimes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sorry. Why would you say that is then? <laughs> I'd say there's more variety. Okay. Yeah. Um, musically, there's uh, more flavors or tastes or, you know, kind of thing. And I mm-hmm. like that. You know, yeah. It's a bit. But, you know, when you get a group of musicians together, you know, so when that four get together or whatever the, you know, the, the whoever the, the four's, four's pretty cut down now, that's the Pixies. Yeah. Yeah. But if you remove one of those people and start performing with something else, mm. it's a different feel and vibe yeah. and that becomes a different group. And I guess sure. that's what, that's what he does with that. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I like that, but it's, you know, it's all Frank, Charles, whatever you want to call him, I guess. Yeah. I don't know him, so I, I call yeah. him Frank Black. But, yeah. Um, uh-huh. um, um, Yeah, he's just a great songwriter, isn't he? So, well, he certainly is, and, and prolific as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, he almost you almost feel that he probably comes up with a new song every day, kind of thing. So, but you, I think you you do. You're always working at stuff. I mean, I, I don't do this. I don't do that for a job. And last night I was trying to write stuff and write lyrics for a new song that we're working on. And, you know, uh-huh. I'm just a hobbyist. You know? yeah. So, if you're doing it for a living. It's you know ingrained in you. you know, yeah. It's what you do. Yeah. Um, so um, from his solo career, then, have, have you got a favourite uh, favourite album? And then uh, can we boil that down to a favourite track? Yeah, so I'm going to say... Um, yeah, maybe the self-titled album, Frank Black. Mm-hmm. And maybe Calistan. Sorry, what? I didn't catch Calistan. that. Calistan. Calistan. Yeah. Calistan. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, I think so. First time that that one's been chosen from his solo career. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And um, you've spoken a little bit about your band that you have. Um, are they influenced by Pixies? Well, I guess, in, yeah, in a way, I guess, because um, when we started out, so I started playing the guitar about, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, uh, probably because of Pixies, mm-hmm. I think. I'd seen a guy on YouTube playing Cactus, and I right. thought, I, I, I was looking for a new hobby, Yeah, because yeah, I'd, I'd been doing karate for okay. years, and uh-huh. um, I had to quit because I got an injury. 
sure. and um, I was looking for you know a new hobby to do. So I thought that's I'm quite a step guitar. change. <laughs> it is, but I'd always wanted to. So I thought I'll buy an acoustic guitar, and yeah. I, I thought that guy can play that song, Cactus. I'm sure yeah. I can teach myself to play that, and I did. Okay. And then that's the first song I learned to play, uh -huh. um, uh, and I went from there. And um, yeah, what was the question? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. So um, yeah, so I was heavily influenced by. I was talking about talking about your band and and whether oh, it was yeah, influenced yeah. by Pixies. So yeah, I started playing. One of the guys I worked with, who uh, worked in the office that I worked at, I had a band, and they were playing our Christmas party. And um, and they said, I've been playing about six months. They said, Hey, come and play a song at the at the at the party. So I joined yeah. in and played one of the songs. Okay. And um, and that was really good. And uh, his and then the next year, I've been playing like just a year. And they said, oh, you can play the guitar. And our singer, who's normally rhythm guitarist, well, doesn't have to bring his guitar. Right. So that was my first proper gig right. with a band called, they were called the Cushion Heads, I think. Okay. Something like that. Uh, yeah. And um, that was their last, last ever gig. So they okay. were at a loose end. And the guitarist yeah. um, from there worked in office. So we just started jamming, actually. Uh -huh. And I wanted to form a covers band called right. Planet of Sound. Yeah. So I, I tried to do Pixies covers. But we never... Right. I wasn't really, um, I was into Pixies. The other guys liked the Pixies, but yeah. were not heavily influenced by them. Uh -huh. um, but I guess as we started, we started you, writing songs. You went through songs. a few drummers, I, I believe. Well, yeah, we had, uh, our first drummer went to, moved to Australia. Right. Okay. We, weren't a, we weren't a band then. And then we okay. had, um, but once we settled down, uh, we started recording stuff. Um, yeah, about two years ago, our drummer moved to the US. Uh -huh. I was playing guitar in the band, and um, but they all still just want to get away from you as far as possible. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much. <laughs> and we had another guy that sang for a while, and yeah. um, we tried to find another drummer, but um, yeah, we, we struggled. So uh -huh. I just sat, I just decided to do it. So you said that you were, you started to write write new material and that for the band, and uh, yeah, and obviously you, you had to pick up the drumsticks because there wasn't anyone else. Yeah. Well, we've been jam doing we've been jamming and doing stuff like that anyway, and so I think you know we're all married with two kids, kind yeah. of you know busy guys. So it was always yeah. a struggle to get us all together at the same time. Uh -huh. and, uh, if the guy if the drummer couldn't turn up, I'd sit in on the kit, okay, and play. And when we played, just myself and Anthony, who's the guitarist and lead singer, uh, we we'd sort of perform as the horny toads. So okay. we do uh, black keys and white stripes kind of covers and yeah, just. Yeah. Uh -huh. Really good fun, you know, blues based, yeah. simple stuff. Uh -huh. and, um, we do did a few gigs like that as well as the Horn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, um, because his name's Anthony Horn, so right. we're not we're not all curves, well, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. So, so you're the you're the toad then, are you? I'm the toad, absolutely. <laughs> so I guess that some of my songwriting. If I, you know, if I write some of the songs, it would, um, and it's Anthony and I, the two of us, we sort of have a partnership. We, we write stuff together and we finish each other's work and things like that. So it's a real collaboration, uh -huh. which is great. Um, so my and that's in, in and around the Sandbatch area? That you no, we, well, it, in our office where we worked, we had these external offices, like a garage, and there's a big archive there where they have all the archives. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, the director of the company was also in a band, okay. and uh, or the owner of the company yeah. was also in a band, and uh, we used to he used to let us practice in there, so we used that, and then they set up a room. So we've got a room there now permanently where we do all our own recording. So oh, we've got wow. our own studio effectively, and really? so he his band uses it, and, and our band uses it, and it's just it's dedicated. Ideal. It's great. It's perfect. He's a really standout guy. Wow! Fantastic. And um, I know you uh, do some collaboration with Pete as well, Pete Norris up in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess that um, I met. I did first meet Peter. We met him at one of the at the happenings in Manchester, I think. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. Um, because I I spend a lot of time up in Glasgow, up at the University of Strathclyde, actually. Um, you know, they've got a research centre up there, which I go to a lot, and. Mm -hmm. um, so I met Peter and I said, oh, let's, let's meet up for a drink. So we met okay. up at a, the bar and drank a lot of, you know, a lot of rum <laughs> one night. Yeah. And the next time we said, oh, let's meet up on the night they do an open mic. Okay. So we went up there and um, 
and we did a, an open mic session together. And uh, so he cool. done some stuff, and I, I and I did some stuff. Uh -huh. um, I like doing those open mic kind of gigs. Really? Just, yeah, yeah. I think they terrify me. They do at first, but it's great. Um, but I, I just go and play Pixie stuff. Okay. That's what I do. Pixies or Nick Cave yeah. or, or, yeah. or some of my own songs. Uh -huh. um, and it, now, go, it goes, goes down all right, does it, to a raucous Glaswegian crowd? No, I've only done that once in Glasgow. I do it a lot. I've done it around here a lot. Okay. So there's a local pub I go to and they do it. And these guys, no one else, has ever, no one else in there has ever heard of the Pixies except for what I played. So, right, okay. Um, uh-huh. Oh, I think you've broken up. Oh, lost you there for a second. Yeah, I lost you too. Back again now, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Sorry, you. So you were saying about um, what what you play uh, locally to where you are. Um, yeah, yeah, so um, Carry on. Yeah, no, it's just to try and learn to, to play the guitar and get sort of yeah. confidence in performing um, on stage. And I think I did that in the early days when I was first learning guitar, early days, seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to get um, confidence in performing, standing up in front of people and singing and... You yeah. Know, and did, you, did it come easy to you, though, learning to play an instrument? Was it easier than you imagined it was going to be? I think you find it easy if you put in the effort. Yeah. If you don't put the effort in, um, the guitar is one of those things where um, I guess there's a certain point you get to, and it's normally when you learn bar chords mm. on a guitar, especially mm -hmm. if you play acoustic. That people struck you. If you get past that, you're golden. Um, because all the there's all the open chords, the cowboy chord kind of stuff. That's pretty easy to learn. You can teach that in a couple of sessions. Right. And then it's just about um, I guess about getting your rhythm right and understanding that. And if you, you know, you can just practice and practice and practice and you can do mm -hmm. everything. Repetition, repetition, yeah, yeah. repetition, um, <laughs> repetition, repetition. <laughs> and it's the same, you know, so it's, yeah. And uh, so I'm trying to teach myself piano at the moment as well. So, oh, wow. Uh, but my daughter plays the piano. And okay. She's pretty good. And my son plays... He's a good musician. He plays, um, what's he play? He plays double bass. He's been playing uh, bass guitar, but his main trump in instrument is trumpet, and he's just cool. starting saxophone. But he'll go and play the piano and jump on that. Well, so you've he's got really, all these instruments to hand then, have you, in the house? Yeah, yeah. There's a piano there, there's a guitar there, there's a piano thing here. And, um, what about Jenny? The, does, Je she, does Jenny play? She played the trombone when she was a kid. So okay. she's played at the Albert Hall. Oh, wow. Oh, she kept yeah, that quiet. So, Yes, she does. So, uh, but you know, one of those youth band kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, what a what a game! Oh, no. no, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a bit different to a backstreet pub in Glasgow. Yeah, but they're good fun as well. <laughs> those kind of things, and we yeah. we play pubs, and you know, they they they're good. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. When people look at you and go, "That's a bit odd." You know? uh -huh. Just, so, so, so collaborating with Peter then, how, how does that work from a sort of a technical perspective? Because I think, oh, yeah, you, yeah. So, so I think you do, do you generally do the drums and that for him? Is that right? Yeah, no, yeah. So, uh, so Peter sort of, uh, he does a lot of, um, you know, sort of solo work and he's been in bands and stuff. So he, he just sent, said, Oh, do you fancy doing drums for this track? And I said, Yeah, I'll do that. And, um, he kind of regrets asking me because it takes me ages to do anything. So, okay. <laughs> so yeah. I'm working on one for him at the moment. So uh -huh. it's nearly done, nearly yeah. done. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, it's quite good fun. So I what he'll he'll send me a track without drums on it. Yeah, and he's he's kind of nearly in a finished sort of state, as it were, as a demo. Yeah, and uh, I'll listen to the sort of songs for a while. Yeah. I've got a sort of kit upstairs that like an acoustic kit upstairs yeah. that I'll play on do that and then I'll actually sort of record the song um, but not that's going to go on there just record the part and then I'll um, I'll sort of edit it in the computer too so so I mean I'm, I'm not a musician at all so so does Peter when he sends you that that um, that track does he have an idea as to how he wants the drums to sound or he just says 
do what you like with it kind of thing and and you you fit it to what he gives you yeah i mean it's pretty obvious sometimes i've only done two so it's pretty yeah. obvious what he the kind of feel he he want, wanted on it um i guess the latest one for me i listened to it and i went oh that sounds like the beatles okay you know or it's got that kind of vibe to it and yeah. um so you think oh i'll try, try and uh, channel some ringo or something uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but I've only been drumming for two years, so it's okay. difficult for me to channel anyone except for a, a new drummer. So uh-huh. yeah. trying to break out of the standard sort of things that you, you do is, um, yeah. it's a long, it's just down to experience, really. So I'm, I'm really at the beginning of that journey on, uh-huh. on that. Uh, so and then, and then well, it will get sent off to Dusty and he, he tidies it all up? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah. The, the parts I send will be should be pretty much done um, and I'll send them the separate sort of tracks for that. And then Dusty, I think I assume has put it together and sort of edited it and yeah. does what he needs to do on that. What he, what he feels from an engineering sort of side of things yeah. on the production side and uh-huh. you know, lots, lots of decisions to make, but it's the new song's really, really good. Really enjoyed doing it. So, so, um, so drumming came to you out, out of necessity really to keep the band going. So have you got any drumming heroes? Obviously, Dave yeah. Levering, but um... da- yeah, David's great. I mean, he's um, yeah, he's really, really good. But Phil Collins for me, okay, is, is, is uh, John Bonham. I'm a, I'm a big Genesis yeah. fan. So, okay, uh huh. Um, yeah. Is that the proper? Genesis? Yeah, so I'll switch between good, Genesis the good, the and good uh, Genesis. Pixies. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, all, it's all it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it all. So. Uh huh. I love the Peter Gabriel stuff. I love yeah. the you know selling them by the pounds. My sort of favorite album. Okay. Tied nearly with uh, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, so it's uh-huh. the early stuff. But yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in the in the uh, later catalogue as well. So. Sure. Okay. And Guitar Heroes? That's Frank Black, really. I mean, yeah. I, I, for me... Um, what, above Joey? Yeah, because I, I consider... I would, my target was always to be a rhythm guitarist. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I think... Charles is a is a really good really good rhythm guitar player. Yeah. As well. Um, yeah. I mean, there's all the the great lead guys, but I don't. I can't see myself in that. So I I like it, but I like the rhythm players because um, yeah, they're the unsung heroes of the bands. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you know, when you listen to the Pixies, Charles is driving it, and whoever you know, Kim or whoever on the bass is. Sort of drive that along with, and then Joey peppers it with, makes it, you know, pixifies it or whatever yeah, with the, all the, all the his, So yeah, he's great. I love that, but I, I don't aspire to be like that kind of guitarist. So for me, I aspire to be more like a, a, a rhythm guy. And, uh, sure. Yeah. Keeping so it you, together. Well, if you if you wanted to see, um, if you went and heard just Joey just playing by himself, yeah, on that, it, it's the stuff that goes on the top. Mm. Yes. Um, no, he's a great guitarist, but yeah. you know, the, 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 the thread of the song is with the is with the rhythm guitar. So mm-hmm. but that's, that's how I see it, anyway. So sure. Yeah. So for me, I'm a big Metallica fan. So like Jake Hetfield, you know, he's more, you know great rhythm guitar. Player. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So I, I, if I pick up a guitar, I want to play what he's playing rather than you know what the, what Kirk's yeah. playing in Metallica. So. And do you and Jenny share similar music tastes other than Pixies? There's a bit of crossover. I think, um, yeah, we like uh, similar stuff. So Smashing Pumpkins was uh, really like that. I think some of the earlier pop, Jenny was into that kind of stuff um, yeah. in there. I was a massive Marillion fan when I was okay. a kid. Uh-huh. And yeah. the early, early stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where I sort of started listening to stuff. So Jenny doesn't, that doesn't cross over. But now I guess if you looked at the music stuff, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, yeah. we're both massive fans of Nick Cave. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've seen them a few times. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Radiohead I am, but Jenny's not a massive, she doesn't really like Radiohead. I loved Radiohead for about two and a half albums and then they just got a bit too weird for me not weird no. i don't know i just find it a bit unlistenable but then i love really? the fall i love the fall though so you know which are the probably the ultimate unlistenable band really yeah i i i've tried i i like some of their stuff but some of it yeah. i just 
I, I don't. But you know, we all like different stuff. That's what makes yeah. it interesting, I guess. I just now, think I, I just think after the bends that uh, sort of radio have oh, been no. on a bit of a down like down no. downward trajectory. In, ra- in rainbows is their pinnacle. Is know? it? In rainbows okay. is absolutely amazing album. Okay, and I'll have to listen to that. It's one of my favourite albums of all time. What, be- better than the Benz? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Wow, okay. I'll, um, I'll have to check it out then. Yeah, no, it's, it, yeah, it's really, really a good, great album. Okay. And they're great musicians. They do, there's this uh, thing on YouTube where they do, they play it in a, they call it um, In Rainbows in the Basement, and they play the whole album live. Right. It's phenomenal. So. Okay. Really, really good. And your children, have they got similar musical tastes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so you brought them up well then. <laughs> yeah, they both all like the Pixies. So they we, we when we went to the, we went saw the Pixies at Blue Dot Festival yeah. a few mm-hmm. years ago, and yeah. um, we were all at the front. Yeah, uh, my son was pretty young then, so he he started feeling a bit nauseous, I guess, because we were right yeah. near the bass bins at the front of the festival. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you know he probably you know, didn't get that. So he sort of went to the back after a while, but my daughter and I were on, on the railings at the front. It was yeah. uh, amazing. So, so they, uh-huh. both, they both love the Pixies. Yeah. Um, but Daniel's into trumpet, so he likes that New York sort of jazz um, okay. sort, of, sort of scene, really, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I like a bit of jazz as well. So, uh-huh. yeah. And that Blue Dot um, Festival as well, I guess for someone in your industry at yeah, Jodrell Bank, and that is um, sort of like the ultimate combination for you, I guess, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so there was... Um, did you, you Just were, explain did you, what a Jodrell Bank is to people who... Jodrell Bank's are radio telescopes, very large radio telescope. Yeah. Drive through Cheshire, you can't miss it. Yeah. And that, the weird thing is that that's on my route to work. Okay. okay, yeah. I used to work in the summers across the road from that. Uh-huh. So they're, across the road from Jodrell Bank, there's a nursery, and my mum used to work there. Okay, I know, and, yeah, because uh, it's, it's almost just like country lanes and that around there, isn't it? it? Is. And then well, you're driving that, along these country lanes, and then suddenly there's this massive, great big... White it's a few miles from where I grew up. So my yeah. favourite band were playing literally just down the road from me. Yeah. It was, um, yeah. it was. There was no way that we weren't going to be there. It was uh-huh. a brilliant weekend, absolutely yeah. brilliant weekend. And um, yeah, our um, the bass player in our band was also there. Okay. So with his family, and mm-hmm. um, it was, yeah, it was really really great yeah. weekend. Yeah. So, and um, other pixie happenings that you've been to? So you, uh, you went to went to. We went to the Manchester one where mm-hmm. we went to, did, did the Hey Pixies thing. That was really good. But you didn't sing, apparently. You didn't no. do the Pixie. No, no, no. Yeah. no. No, it's for other people. I, I do open mics all the time. I, you know, I get my fill of that stuff. Other people don't. So, you know, uh-huh. don't so you weren't, you weren't going to do a, a sing-off with uh, Mike Flynn then? No. <laughs> There's no need for that. <laughs> he would have won anyway. So, you know, he was, that was nice. pretty good. That was a good night. That was a really good night. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah. Yeah, that one. And then um, I guess the, we all met up at the, in Manchester again last year, didn't we? Uh, did you, you were there? No. Uh, no, I met you. I met you at Adele's wedding. We went to Adele's wedding. That was a really yeah. good weekend. That was mm-hmm. a great weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. Kid free weekend. So brilliant. Yeah. Uh, long drive down there. It was, you know, yeah. like being young again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was a great weekend. Um, and Manchester last year. Uh, yeah. We met up for the uh, that tour. We where we we did the went to the re- the signing at the re- record store. Uh, okay, we yeah, met, yeah. met the band. Uh-huh. Sort of met the band. Yeah. Um, but that was really you know we were all like in the queue like little kids. Yeah. It was it was really good, uh-huh. and the gig was amazing. So. Did you get anything signed by the band? Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got the album over there and the CD as well. So we've got the vinyl and the CD both signed, and uh-huh. that was good. I, I wish it had taken, um, yeah, the drummer from Hey Pixies there, he took his uh, drum skin on there and he got that signed by Nick Mason previously and got David oh, cool. to sign it as well. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I wish I'd have done something like that. Yeah. I, I wish I'd have taken my guitar to get a big band to sign it. But, you know, like, Think next about time, things maybe. afterwards. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I was too nervous to, to, you know, when you meet people, um, it's... It's good fun. Sure. It's a really good day. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I saw them on, on that tour as well um, a couple of times. So, yeah, it was great. Um, so just going back to Catholics then, have you got a favourite um, Catholics track? Okay. Um, so I know you said that you possibly like their stuff more than you like uh, 
Pixies. So it's going to be a tough choice for you. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I really can't choose the album either. So I think the album I'd go for Show Me Your Tears. Yeah, yeah. I love that album. It's mm-hmm. great. And um, I think New House of the Pope. New House of the Pope. Yeah, that's, because who that's... doesn't like Chateau Neuf de Pap? <laughs> Absolutely. A bit early in the morning for me at the moment, but yeah. It's I know never too early for Chateau Neuf de Pap. <laughs> Sorry, repeat that again. New House of the Pope. Of the Pope. Uh, that's definitely a new one. A new one to me and the first time it's been chosen. So. Yeah, and there, there's a a few years ago in Manchester, uh, Charles did a um, interview at um, there's a venue called Albert Hall in Manchester. Yeah, it's a small venue, really cool venue mm-hmm. actually. And um, he did an interview with Dave Haslam, who's a journalist yeah. um, there. So we all, you know, it was just a an interview with 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 Charles. It was great. And uh, yeah. at the end of that, he. He didn't do performance. He, he he came on and he did like um I guess like a monologue, which and he basically read the words out for uh, New House of the Pope, or mm-hmm. not read the words out, you know, yeah. spoke in a in a kind of um, in a performance. And he didn't play his guitar, and everyone was yeah. expecting him to play his guitar. But this yeah. I thought was more powerful. It was really really good, and it's uh-huh. um and that was a great great thing. So I love that song. Because it's got that, it's got that. For me, it's got that link as well, and it's okay. a great song. It's a good yeah. album. It's a breakup album. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. So you know, yeah. if, you know, but it's good. It's very bluesy. It's, it's got a tinge of country in it. It's got. You know, it's a nice, and there's some great, great songs on there. Uh-huh. Cool. Okay, I've written that down, so uh, that will go on my uh, posting. And um, what about all the sort of merchandise now? Are you a, are you a t-shirt man, a poster man for the Pixies? Uh, T-shirt. Oh yeah, I buy T-shirts at the gigs and stuff like yeah. that. Of course, you know. Uh-huh. So, and um, I guess that. And does Jenny as well? I think I, I would have asked her the same question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think my favourite bit of merchandise is a Pixies tea towel. Okay. So, yeah, that's the tea towels are the best bits of merchandise you can get. Right. Why is that then? Because <laughs> they get good use. They got good use. They're out. They're really cool. The pixie ones, and you great. don't have to worry about whether they fit or not. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. They don't shrink it. They don't shrink in the wash. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, yeah, they're they're really good. My, I've got one from. Remember Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds? They they had a shoot offshoot band called Grinder Man. I didn't yeah. know that. No. Okay. If you yeah, it's very. It's like uh, old men behaving really badly. And doing very loud music. Grinder yeah, yeah. Man albums, are, you should listen to them. If you, if you like okay. the cave, yeah, yeah, and you like more, more aggressive kind of stuff, you know, or loud and sort of raucous, then yeah. the Grinder Man stuff is amazing. Uh-huh. Um, but they, we went to that gig, and I was trying to get a mug, but they had um, these tea towels, which was a picture of their faces, which were just like, um, or like uh, pencil drawings, um, I guess. Uh, illustrations and, and we got the tea towel for that and that's one of my favorite bits of merch okay so uh-huh. we, we got the pixies yeah. one i thought oh great add that to the collection so yeah that's what i'm looking i'm looking for more you know, tea towel merchandise now so you do the drying up in the house I have, yeah yeah there's a lot of drying up to do so. <laughs> okay i've got some i've got a couple of questions for you from yeah, okay. uh, from some of the members of the group don't worry it's, it's nothing i'd say members of the group the facebook group i mean not, not yeah, okay so. yeah um I tried to get I tried to get your wife to ask her an embarrassing question, but she she's on your side. She's batting for you. She couldn't come up with anything. So um, she I knows think. all my secrets. So she says nothing suitable for public knowledge. Yeah. So when I said, Absolutely. "Is there anything embarrassing about him?" So, no, there <laughs> is. There's plenty. But um, my wife's she's, lovely. She's she's batting on your side, mate. So she wouldn't she wouldn't spill the beans. Um, we kind of touched on this already, but Peter, I spoke to him and he said. Um, which do you prefer playing, the drums or the guitar? <clears throat> Live, I guess the drums. Um, both. Uh, I think, you know, if when we look at the full trajectory, I think I really enjoy the drums. I really enjoy the drums. It, it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, I and think that's, self, that's self-taught as well, isn't it, the drums? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just trying to find my way at the moment. Mm-hmm. Problem is now there's too much information out there. So you look and you know, yeah. it's, it's how do I choose? So it's trying to distill that and find out what what 
that you do, but I'm not, I'm just, I'm trying to learn to play and also create drum parts for tracks. So it's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. So I can just focus on one thing. I don't have to learn anybody else's parts. So that's right. great. <laughs> okay. So, so really you're, you're happy playing either then really? Yeah, yeah. Is it kind of, if you're playing the drums, you'd rather be playing the guitar, and if you're playing the guitar, you'd rather be playing the drums sort of thing? Well, last night when I was listening to all this stuff to go through all my favourite tracks, I just picked yeah. up my guitar and played along. So I, okay. you know, I still love doing that as well. Yeah. Couldn't resist, because a lot of the songs I've learned, songs uh -huh. and, and um, yeah, so you yeah. just do that. It's good fun. And um, so the bands, when once they got back together, we had Indie Cindy and various EPs, Head Carrier, and obviously yeah. most recently Beneath Theory. You're happy with the way that the band has evolved over the years? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. We just make more music. Yeah. Uh -huh. going. Uh, yeah, I like the new stuff uh, yeah. a lot. And um, I was listening to some of it sort of yesterday to remind, I, I'm, Beneath the Area, I think, is the, is the standout of those, um, uh -huh. I think. But there's great, great stuff on all of the, all of the albums. Um, I think Indie Cindy, I really, I think I'd go... I could, if I ordered them, it'd be Beneath the Area, then Indy Cindy, then Head Carrier, probably. Okay. Uh -huh. um, cool. Like that, so. And the new single? I listened to it once the other day. I haven't got around to putting okay. it on yet. So, uh -huh. um, so obviously Paz on lead vocals this time. Yeah. 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 And um, I have to give it a couple of listens before I decide if I like it or not. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I, could, I can't even remember how it goes at the moment. So I, no, it's it's yeah, it's a slow burner. I, I would say certainly. I, I I couldn't pick the tune out at the moment. But um, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, she's clearly a very talented musician though, and has yeah, and has, really has helped to sort of change the direction. I think of the band, isn't? But well, that's great. I mean, yeah, you you you've got to get your inspiration somewhere, and you know, when you've got a group of people making music, you, you just whatever comes out is right. You know. Mm -hmm. I think if you try and force it in a different way, it's not going to be good. So yeah. whatever comes out naturally is going to be the right, the right thing. Sure. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And how, how do you feel about the future of the band as well? Do you think they'll carry on for a good few years yet? Well, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Why not? You know, uh -huh. I don't um, see Charles giving up singing and songwriting. Can you? No, I'd be, but you know, I, I, yeah, I'd like to go. I'd love to see, I don't want, you know, I'd like to see him, um, do more with on the Catholic side or the other stuff as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, you work yeah. with what's working at the moment, I guess. Absolutely, brilliant. Okay, well we've got you, to that. To... You forgot the Black Francis stuff, so you did Pixies, Frank Black, Frank Black and the Catholics. But you didn't uh, well, do I, Black I, Francis. I lump, I lump, I lump Frank Black and Black Francis in as being one act, uh, uh, rightly okay. or wrongly. Well, but if you want to choose well, another one, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, because Bluefinger, Bluefinger is an absolute masterpiece, I think. I mean, that's okay. an amazing album. Okay. You know, and uh, Tight Black Rubber or something like that. Such a great, great song. Right. I shall write that down as well. You're the first person that's picked me up on that. But uh, Tight Black Rubber. Tight, Tight Black Rubber. Tight Black Rubber. Okay. As in Tight Black Rubber. Yes. I get you. Yeah, it's a brilliant album. It's, okay. really, it's, like, yeah, it's yeah. a concept album, really. You yeah, know, it's uh, it's really, really good. Cool. Okay, yeah. I've written it Great. down. It will go on my posting when I put this uh, video up. So um, that final question. There you are. Warm it's about up a picture. Warmer, warmer packed for the Pixies at uh, Jodrell Bank in front of thousands of people, some of whom you'll know personally. Yeah. And uh, you've got to sing one Pixie song without any clothing on whatsoever. Yeah, subculture. Subculture. Okay, cool. Any particular reason why subculture? I love that song. I played it so many times in front of people. So, yeah. So I mean, I'll go to the pub and I'll play subculture on the guitar and sing along to that. Is that so, not quite a difficult song to to sing? Yeah, it, it's, it's a good one to learn on the guitar because it, it's really syncopated. Yeah. The guitar and the singing. It's so when you when you learn to play the guitar, you learn to play the guitar, and then you try and sing along, and it's yeah. like, wow, that's difficult. Yeah. Then you get to songs like Subculture, where it's you've got to have it completely going in your mind. Yeah. And singing it, and if you can do stuff like that, then you're on a. It's best to work at things like that are really difficult. And once you've got it, yeah, it's in there. It's great. So, yeah, happily do that. 
naked or clothed, not a problem. Brilliant. Preferably naked. Preferably naked. Preferably okay. naked. Because then so, it'll distract, distract people from your playing. Like everybody's <laughs> repulsed without closing their eyes. So, you know, it's the easiest way to do it. And then pixies come on to fire you after you've warmed up the crowd nicely. Absolutely. Just kick me off on the stage and I'll land on my face and then I'll enjoy your gig. So, have, you answered, that, have you answered that question yourself yet? No, no one's interviewed me. So. All right. No. Someone's okay. going, someone is going to, though. It's, it's lined up. So. Good. Okay. So I'm not going to answer you now. All right. Well, I'll wait, I'll wait for the reveal. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just spinning it out for as long as possible. We're just trying to do more and more of these interviews so as I never have to answer the question. But, no, they're really good. They're really good. I've, I've watched quite a few of them. I've not watched them all, you know, uh, but I've watched a few of them. And, um, Thank you. They're really good. Yeah. You know, they're entertaining and uh, it's really interesting so no and there's just so many great people around the world who i've had a chance to speak to as well that i wouldn't have yeah. done otherwise no i think this group's been um it's interesting i don't normally you know i think the joke with jenny where it is that you know i'm not interviewing for new friends at my age yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. getting involved with groups like that you know you're kind yeah. of setting your life so yeah, yeah. when you go i think when we went to that first happening it was quite you know for me to I mean, I'm not antisocial. I'm pretty sort of extroverted in a way. So I'll get yeah. on with anybody, but yeah. I've got to go and do it and force myself to get out. And, uh, once you're there, you so enjoy it. Once you're there, yeah. it's great. And, yeah. uh, so, and there's some great people we've met and um, you know, some interesting interesting yeah. people. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that's good. Yeah, cool. Lovely. So well, thanks, I'll, let you get back, I'll let you get back to your Sunday. A few more yeah. minutes of peace before either the wife gets back or the kids get up. So... Yeah, well, another yeah, and it's, uh, it's midday nearly. Yeah. Nearly midday. So go make yourself a coffee muscle. or something or whatever, or read the newspaper. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time, James. It's been great to see you again and to uh, speak to you at uh, some length. You too, Andrew. Have a great day. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.